Good evening. We are here today with a dear friend, Anthony Tamburi, Dean of the Calandria Institute. Thank you very much, Anthony, for coming here. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. <laughs> and uh, we are going to uh, speak about uh, Italian in the States, uh, American in Italy. But I'd like very much to start with a very simple question. You have this double name, Anthony Tamburi, uh, which is a sort of mixture between uh, English and Italian. Where does it come from? Okay, so Tamburi is, uh, is from Lazio, is Churciaro, because half of my family is Churciaro, the other half is uh -huh. uh, Pugliese. And actually, the, the Anthony is after my great grandfather, that would be my mother's father, uh -huh. grandfather, who was Leonardo Antonio. Ah. And so I became Antonio. But uh, they named but you Anthony, Anthony not Anthony. Antonio. Right, Anthony, with an H. And that's the difference between the English and the American, right? With yes. an H. Yeah. But uh, uh, your uh, father did uh, he come here uh, or no. he was already here? When my, he was both my parents were born in the States. Uh -huh. uh, my grandparents and some of my aunts and uncles were born in Italy. So we're a strange generation. We're not a clean cut yes. from one generation to the other. And, and uh, the wife of uh, your mother, Mina, was uh, she Italian or? Yeah. Uh, 100% Pugliese. Pugliese. Yeah. And did you speak Italian in the They spoke a dialect, actually. They spoke, on the one hand, both of them spoke more or less a dialect, although the Tamburri spoke more Ital standard Italian. Uh -huh. My Pugliese grandmother could not read or write, neither Italian and they, therefore nor English. Yeah. And she spoke only this dialect that is Franco Provenzale. Wow. In, 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 in sort of southwest of Foggia, there are two localities. One is Faeto, mm -hmm. where my family's from, and the other one, I think, is Celle San Vito, which is like across the valley. Those two places have remained this sort of Franco Provenzale island, linguistic island. Anchor, yeah. uh, so, so I would hear things in home like Luce e Frai. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You which said, is la carne fresca. Kind of, <laughs> yes, which is uh, uh, it's uh, reminding me yeah. uh, of uh, uh, the Middle Age and uh, when uh, the Franco Provenzale right. was in itself uh, exactly. a language. A language yeah. I think that uh, this is very useful because uh, uh, people uh, sometimes uh, do not realize. Uh, how much uh, varieties of language we have in Italy. Right. Not uh, really dialects, but uh, they are languages. Uh, since uh, we have uh, books uh, written uh, in those languages, right. uh, they have uh, a prominent, uh, uh, prominent um, importance uh, uh, also from the cultural point uh, of view. So you didn't uh, speak uh, Italian actually no. in your family? No, we, we understood certain things, you know, just sort of basic. Uh -huh. Because, especially because um, one of our grandparents couldn't speak English at all, basically. She, her English yes. was barely functional. And she lived here from 1913 to 1973. And she never and learned She never English. learned English, no. And in fact, because she never became a, an American citizen, my grandfather, her husband, did. But she didn't. In 1942, she was classified as an enemy alien with the little libretto, yes. which is like a little passport. Yes. And I have that in my office. That is an incredible story that yeah. many people do not know because there right. were also a sort of a concentration camp. There were, uh, oh, it's hard to say how many, but probably around 2,000, 2,500 Italians were interned. Um, and they were mostly people affiliated with the government or affiliated with business, Italian companies, etc. Um, or some prominent Italian citizens. And then just the, about 700,000 residents, but permanent residents in the United States, but who weren't citizens, had to register as um, enemy aliens. And, and so they would have a little passport, just a little libretto, a little book, just like a passport. And, and uh, when did uh, they... Uh, 
took off, uh, take off of this passport. Uh, one passport. year. It lasted one year. It lasted only one, one year. year. Yeah. Um, I think at, the, at that point, the American government realized that this wasn't okay. a good idea. Now, of course, the Japanese were the ones who suffered the most, especially yeah. on the West Coast, because while the Italians and the Germans were basically citizens of Italy or Germany, for the most part, the Japanese were second and third generation yeah. that were interned. I mean, they were yes. American uh, as can be. Yes. Yeah. And did you live uh, in, 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 in an Italian uh, uh, neighborhood? Very or? much so. Uh, yes. yes. Where? In Stamford, Connecticut. There was a very prominent Italian community there. Um, did this part of the uh, town uh, have uh, a name, an Italian name? No, we just, no, no, no. We called it the West Side, the West Side. because it was the West Side of the city uh -huh. of Stamford. And um, it, it, half, when I was growing up, half the people were immigrants, basically. And they were older, of course, my grandparents' age, etc. cetera. And, um, and some of them... You know, even the ones who had little businesses, like our shoemaker, the uh -huh. Calzolaio, Calzolaio, he could barely speak English, yeah, you know. Yeah. And so, but he was functional in English, but uh -huh. hardly ever spoke English. Always so there was English. a very strong community. Yeah. And does uh, this community exist uh, uh, even no, now? No, it's 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 sort scattered, of yeah, yeah. scattered. Yeah, yeah. And 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 so those places would become the little hangouts too. Uh -huh. So two, you would see two or three guys in front of the calzolai uh -huh. chatting. Whatever. Yes, so they, like you would see Italy. two or three uh -huh. in front of another store where that was owned by an Italian yes. immigrant who spoke Italian. Do yeah. you have an Italian market too for food? Uh, there were, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Italian uh, tradition also yeah. in the kitchen. Uh, yes, which uh, are so. different from north uh, and south. I don't, yes. I don't know w w what kind we, of tradition we were. We were to. basically all southerners right <laughs> so everybody was more or less from a, a, a few a few from lazio but basically Campa, you know campagna okay. from basilicata from um a few there's a, a fairly large um a pugliese community mm -hmm. in stanford uh so it, it, we were basically all southerners and then um then one family from the north of Italy, moved into the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. And you may know, you know Paolo Giordano? Yes. Okay, so Paolo and I grew up together ah. in Stanford. When he was nine years old, his family came to Stanford, and Paolo's from Bordighera, yes. right? So he was this northern family <laughs> who found themselves, you know, with all these southern Italians. And, uh, he was uh, uh, twice a stranger. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he was not American, and he was not right. uh, from right. south so, Italy. So, so, yeah, we were basically southern Southern Italian. And uh, when you moved to you moved to, uh, to New York, uh, when uh, you arrived here at CUNY, or yeah, did you at move CUNY. Ah, at CUNY? CUNY. Uh, I, I have one of those careers in the academy where I moved around. Right? So and where when, did you and start? At first, again? I moved around per force. Uh -huh. Afterwards, per chance. Yes. But so. Uh, uh, which were your steps? Your, well, um, I, I was, I, my first four or five years were at Smith and Middlebury. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to Auburn for a year. And then uh -huh. I went to Purdue. And I stayed at Purdue for a long uh -huh. time. And Purdue was really great. I found, in, I went there in the late 80s and all through the 90s. And P Purdue was vibrant. The School of Liberal Arts was really, really vibrant. And, and if we had an idea, our chair, and I need to mention him, Howard Mansing, um, and I think it was Mancini. Mancini, <laughs> Howard yes, I Mancini. Think so. Howard was yeah. wonderful. He would, if we said Howard, we'd like to do this. Okay, try. Let's try. You know, we did. So we ended up doing a conference on Romance languages and literatures and film for like twelve years. Wonderful. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting because probably you are the one of uh, your family who speak uh, speaks. Uh, Best uh, Italian. Mm. Uh, you decided to study Italian, uh, not only to speak Italian as uh, the son of a family yeah. uh, of Italian heritage. When you do, uh, did you decide that uh, your career will be, will be in Italian, Italian studies? Um, so, so I started studying Italian formally in in the tenth or eleventh grade. Uh, before that, I studied Latin, and and. You know, there was this little pigeon Italian that we had in the house, mm -hmm. right? Amongst us kids. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, 
When I started studying Italian, having done already three years of Latin, it was easy. It wasn't hard to learn the grammar and all that. Oh, so that was pretty easy, right? Um, in even, college, even now, if you want to yeah. write well in Italian, yeah. you must have studied Latin. <laughs> so it's a very good way yeah. of beginning, yeah. <laughs> also for Italian people. Right. So, um, so when I went to college, we had to declare our major early on, like as soon as we got there. And I, I wanted to do physical education, actually. Oh. I was a high, an athlete, I was a gymnast in high uh -huh. school, and I thought I wanted to do physical education and be a physical education teacher. And it, I went to a small college in Connecticut, which is now called Southern Connecticut State University, and it was crowded. It was known for a physical education, and it was crowded. And they said, you can't do that, you have to do something else. So I said, classics. And they said, we don't have a classics page. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, Italian. So, and my uh, thought initially was that I would switch back. Uh -huh. And instead, I didn't. One semester. That's all it took. What is the kind of course? One semester. You I had. I and I decided. I'm going to study Italian. This is fun. But you did you take uh, language courses? Or I did. I took language, advanced language. Advanced yeah. language. And, and then culture literature. courses too. And uh, then culture courses. Yeah. Culture courses. And and then and then I went. To uh, I enrolled in Middlebury College's master's program. We have to say for uh, uh, the Italian people who is uh, listening to this conversation that uh, Middlebury is a great university yeah. for teaching learning languages. Yeah. It's yeah. a great center. I've known uh, so many people who teach Italian and come from uh, Middlebury. They are usually great. Right. And, the, and, this, and what, what is then and still now is known, the Scuola Italiana dates back to 1932. So, it's a yeah, the oldest school is a German school, mm -hmm. which is 1915, uh, I think. So, so I went to Middlebury because I thought I wanted to teach high school. Right? Ah, and this you is so beautiful. Yeah, and so you need a master's to teach <laughs> yeah, high school, course. to keep your job. Yeah. So I thought, I'll do the master's, get it over with, and, and that's it, and buonanotte, right? <laughs> Well, when I was in Italy, I became friends with some young assistenti. At that time, there were only the yes, assistenti. Uh, there were no. It was before the eighties. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I, they, you know, they invited me here and invited me there, whatever. And I really fell in love with studying literature. And so, halfway through the year, I decided I would apply for a doctoral program. And you became <laughs> one of the most prominent scholars in Italian so, and Italian American yeah. studies. And I'd like very much to ask you uh, about uh, this uh, TV program, uh -huh. uh, which has a wonderful name, a name uh, which is connected to uh, also to the studies and to the books of a dear friend, Piero Bassetti. The name is Italics which uh, probably s sound a bit strange for uh, the American uh, uh, here, because yeah. italics uh, is a, a character, uh, it, is it, a, it, a font. Yeah. Uh, it's not only... It, it's, it's, uh, we, it, the TV station, that, yeah. um, the, I mean, our TV program, program, that predates me. That was 1988. Uh -huh. and, and the name was already italics. The name was already italics, yeah. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, italics in the sense of corsivo, right? Corsivo. So my thought was, so when I got there in 2006, there was a moment where I thought, maybe we should change the name. Because uh, you print, uh, you are also the director of uh, the col book collection, where the book of uh, Piero Bassetti, yes. Vogliamoci Italici, yes. uh, was uh, uh, translated published and English. published. Yes, exactly. I don't remember the uh, Bordighera translation. Press, uh, we did no, it no, but uh, the translation is, uh, let's wake up. Wake up, it, let's wake up Italics. Italics. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, everybody told him, it's strange for an yeah. American, yeah. but uh, you decided to, to keep it. Well, we name. kept it because I was convinced. The reason why I thought about it was, you know, historically Italico uh. in the 20th century, right? It dates back to the regime and people think whatever. So, uh, th and I had that in the back of my head. So I spoke to, um, he's no longer, he, unfortunately he passed away, but our producer, and I said, and I said, you know, Bill, maybe we should. And he convinced me that once you have a brand, you have to stay with it. You know, 
And, and he said, it is after all italics, it is in English, et cetera, et cetera. So he convinced me okay. that we should keep it. Would you yeah. like to explain everybody what's the difference between Italians and Ita italics? Because of course, uh, Italians uh, are linked to uh, the process uh, of Italy yeah. to becoming a nation. So they are linked to a territory, uh, to some boundaries, uh, to a, um, a descent from right. an Italian family. What are the, the italics? The italics, the, the, the italici, italici, assetis, yes. italici. So I think, I love his idea of the, I always say italici, italici even in English. Yes. I keep it in the, in the, in the yes. plural. I love the idea that he sees the Italian in Italy, who's never left Italy, the Italian, someone like you, or who who has who lives abroad, who has lived abroad, yeah. um, someone like me, who is an who is a, a son or daughter or yeah. grandson or granddaughter of uh, immigrants, and then those who love Italy. Exactly. The, the, putting them all together, I just thought was great. It was a great idea, yes. and and it it of course works well with. It's analogous to what I was trying to do in the 90s with Italian American literature, right? And saying that um, we need to look at Italian American culture as something that is more tied to Italy than people want to make it, number one. And number two, what do we do with all these people who live here, who were born and raised and socialized in Italy, came here at 25 and 30, now they're 50 and 60, right? Yeah. Who are they? Are they Italian? And as I always say to my friends, because my reference in, it in Italy is Firenze. Uh. The big supermarket in Firenze, was in the first one was in Via Masaccio. And I always say, yeah. <laughs> they don't go shopping in Via Masaccio. <laughs> they go shopping at Gristini's. Exactly. <laughs> so there's a big difference, right? Yes. Just that whole daily interaction with your surroundings. Yeah makes things different. A friend of mine uh, uh, who is Italian, lived here, whatever, would always ask those who would say, I'm Italian, I'm not mm -hmm. Italian American, would say, well, when do you eat your salad? <laughs> go, At the beginning, why? And so, you know, yes, there are these seemingly silly signs that, yeah. but, but I think Bassetti's notion is a wonderful, yes, sir. it's an all-encompassing, um, and it, it, it really just gives us the freedom yes to explore more, to interrogate more the identity of the Italian. We could say that uh, um, Italy is a matter of choice from this point yes. of view. You, yes. may, you can uh, uh, choose of being uh, Ita Italico, even yeah. if uh, you were not born in Italy or right. you uh, didn't uh, come from uh, an immigrant family. But also from this point of view, uh, you are a great scholar uh, in the field of immigration. Um, once we spoke about immigration and migration, today we speak about mobility. What is really yeah. that is a, what's changing? Yeah, you know, you know, that's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine because, um, and I understand, I, I, I don't discount the notion of mobility, okay. nor do I discount the notion of migrante as opposed to emigrante exactly. or immigrante, right? Migrant is fine, except in English, migrant has a reference has a reference to the sort of '60s in California, the migrant worker, mm -hmm. right? I, and yes. and there's nothing wrong with that, but it has that reference. Yes. So I think in English we have to be a little bit more careful, mm -hmm. and maybe mobility is better. Um, I don't know, um, you know, but w b both of us deal with language in, as well as culture, right? Yeah, so right, right. we have those sensitivities. So. Um, I, I like emigration and immigration. You like it? I do. Like um, because I think, I think this, there needs, I think Italy still needs to explore more its emigration history, right? Um, much more than I think it, it does. There is nothing about uh, the history in our school no. books. I can uh, right. uh, testify. And, and, that, and uh, there is uh, just uh, some numbers about uh, the amount uh, of uh, emigrants right. in the 
uh, 19th century, but nothing about their history, what they did when they were mm -hmm. uh, out uh, of Italy, the right. books, uh, for instance, uh, that, uh, right. that all the culture that uh, uh, from, was produced by right. these people. From, from, the late eight, from the late 1800s to 1976, it's calculated that about 28 million Italians left Italy. So when you think of what the population of Italy was in 1900, and in that arc of 100 years, more or less, 28 million people left the country. The whole country left yes. in a way, right? It's puzzling to, to me, not just as a scholar, but as a, a person of Italian origin, that my grandparents, my parents, me, whatever we do with regard to Italy is not noticed quote unquote, right? Um, and, and I think f culturally and philosophically, with a small p, <laughs> mm -hmm. Italy would be a, a more intriguing, it's already intriguing, right? Because it's yeah. the, mm -hmm. you know, the Renaissance and all it of is. that. And no, no, no question that Italy is Western civilization. Mm -hmm. it's, it's Italy at the end that right, gives us modernity with the Renaissance. Um, but I think it would just be even more intriguing mm -hmm. as a country if, if, if we did that. You know, I've spoken always about the Italian writer abroad and my work in the last seven or eight years has been dedicated to looking at also the Italian writer abroad. And so what do we do with these people, right? What do we do with a Luigi Ballerini? What do we do yeah. with, um, uh, Antonio Monda, mm -hmm. what do we do with Tiz uh, uh, Tiziana uh, um, Castro Rinaldi? Mm -hmm. what, what, what do we do with these people who live here, who have been here for decades, who write in Italian, yeah. who publish well in Italy? Who are they? Right? Mm -hmm. So it's opening up, it's good. I, I've seen in the last 10 years yes, or so, uh, things opening up. But Yes, because mobility <laughs> Tends uh, to um, make uh, everybody think about uh, um, going back and forth, uh, not staying in any right. place, uh, and uh, not having a defined uh, identity. This question of identity, I accept that uh, uh, there are, we can have uh, multiple identities, but right. I, I find very difficult uh, to think that uh, we have uh, no identity at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Depending on who's depending on who's writing, you're one thing. You exactly. Know. Yeah, and, yeah. and uh, I think that uh, Italian in the States were able to intertwine multiple identities because uh, they really are connected uh, very strongly with uh, the States, of course, and they are a population who usually uh, lose uh, Italian in the second or third generation. Right. But they are, they are very well connected to the Irish, uh, for yes. instance, uh, community, uh, etc. How do you uh, see things uh, changing uh, for, about immigrants in these latest uh, years? Well, um, you know, we've been through four years of denial of the benefit of immigration, right? Um, we had a really anti-immigrant administration. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you look at the history of the United States, but even today, if you look at the, the, the uh, characteristics of the population of the United States, then and now, it's all mixed. They're all yes. immigrants. When, when, you when know, you just uh, uh, get a taxi and uh, you find uh, everybody, exactly. uh, Polish, uh, yep. Albanese, uh, everybody, mm -hmm. Uh, who came here maybe 20 uh, or 10 years ago, not uh, uh, mm -hmm. generations ago. Right, right. Uh. And, and, there, and, and we're, you know, we're in the Istituti Italiano di Cultura, so with regard to Italy, right? Or with regard to Italian immigrants. Uh, I, I don't know how many people know that the helicopter, the closure of the helicopter, was basically invented by a guy named Belanca, yeah. right? An Italian immigrant who was here. Um, um, you know, when you think of think of the wine industry, when you think of peanuts and things of that sort, of they're all Italian. And then mm -hmm. when you think of, you know, regardless of what your political, um, uh, you know, leanings are, uh, from uh, uh, Pelosi to Pompei to Panetta to 
uh, Cuccinelli, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, we can disagree with some of the other. But all these Italians are around. And the right? uh, Italian American, uh, let's use uh, this category, books, uh, are they changing? Is uh, there from the, the literature well, point of view? Well, we, we, uh, we have different types of Italian Americans, yeah. right? We have those who are interested, let's say, who are culturally interested, mm -hmm. right? Um, the so called book culture. Mm. Um, and, and we have a lot of writers who are Italian American, but people don't realize. Um, well known. Some of them have Italian names. So we have the Lisa Scortoline yeah. and Adriana Trigiani, mm -hmm. who are bestsellers, and of course Don DeLillo, mm -hmm. one of the great writers of the contemporary and era. Also movie directors. Right. But so. we also have someone like Wally Lamb that people don't really know is Italian American, who is also a bestseller, who's written a couple of really big novels. One of which he has a gloss because his characters are Italian, the Sicilian origin. He has a glossary mm -hmm. in the back of his book, and of course, one of his books uh, was made into a miniseries for um, for HBO with mm -hmm. Mark Ruffalo, you know. And and so there's that type of Italian, and then there's the Italian, the, the the American who of Italian descent who rec who wants to be Italian yes, uh, and is more the sort of culinary Italian, mm -hmm. right? So they eat food, they know they, they're proud of Italy, even yeah. though they may not really be that familiar with Italy, but from they mm -hmm. heard it from their grandparents and things of that sort. And then there's the, the American of Italian descent who wants to be American. And for me, it's like, fine, you know. The one thing that I've always tried to do within my work of uh, dealing with Italian American identity is not to impose it on them. Exactly. If, if you don't want to be American, Italian, American, you don't want to be recognized as Italian American, fine, you're American, no problem, you know. But there are those who are. There are those who are proud of this mm -hmm. heritage, and there are those who incorporate it into their art and things like yes, that. Yes, I found also uh, some people who um, are not Italian American because uh, they are still uh, the people linked to the Italy before the unification. Yeah. So uh, this is also interesting how many tradi regional traditions are better, maybe better preserved in the States yeah. than uh, uh, in Italy. And what about your stu students? Um, do we have still, we, we, we are having many students taking Italian at the level of elementary and high school. What, uh, what's happening in the university? So, um, so those students taking Italian, um, for the most part, are of Italian origin. But not all of them, and that's good. Um, because it shows that the Italian language is actually of greater interest, yeah. right? Um, however, we also noticed that there are Italian, and I was speaking to someone the other day about this, there are Italian Americans who in uh, junior high school or high school will take something like French or Spanish because there is no Italian talk. Yes. And so when they go to college, they continue. They take the practical route and continue, yeah. even though they might for a minute think they want to study Italian. So there is that. So the, the idea of, so Italian in the great areas like New York, Chicago, San Francisco, New Orleans, et cetera, where there are a lot of Italians, you find Italian in high school, right? Sometimes you find it in junior high school around here. Yes. But that's our probably our biggest challenge. That's our biggest challenge. Thank you for uh, saying this, uh, Anthony, because I think that uh, uh, this is a crucial problem yeah. for uh, the promotion of Italian culture in uh, the States. Uh, uh, we do not have to uh, think only about uh, the university, but uh, the, about the path that uh, leads uh, to the university and to work uh, on that. I know that uh, um, our structures work very hard here in New York, but uh, the states uh, are very big in the EU. Right. We have to create the condition for uh, helping the students to, to choose uh, Italian when they arrive. Mm -hmm to the university. La, my last question is, uh, when uh, um, do you go back to Italy? Are you going back to as Italy? As soon as we can. <laughs> <laughs> Are you regular? I was supposed no. to, I was supposed, I had a ticket for February 29th, 2020. And I woke up at about four o'clock 
in the morning. I, I woke up like I woke up wide awake, and I thought, okay, let me go get ready, whatever, make sure I got everything in place because uh -huh. I was leaving that day. And I found an email that had been sent by CUNY that said all travel, all uh, work travel suspended because that night, February 28th, yes. the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, had, had um, classified Italy group three. And therefore, we can. And you go. were going. I where? was going to Rome for a week, for a conference, and to do some work with uh, Roma Tre because we have a collaboration with Roma Tre uh -huh. for the Italian Diaspora Studies Summer Seminar, which we've had to cancel for two summers now. We're not going to do it this summer because yeah, of course Italy's not going to be. You know, we're not going to be. I mean, but we are happy because you are here. So, so, <laughs> so, so I, I was invited to something in August, but I don't think it's going to, I don't know if it'll happen. I'll see if it happens. Um, but I'm hopeful to get maybe September. I'm hoping. Let's hope that, uh, yes, yeah. because uh, we, people needed to go back to Italy. Italy too uh, is uh, really waiting for people to arrive. Rome is in Venice are so strange. Yeah. Uh, without uh, everybody complain about uh, tourism uh, usually, <laughs> but now we realize that yeah. uh, uh, when yeah. people are moving, uh, we live uh, in a very good uh, yeah. uh, world, and uh, this is uh, really positive. So thank you, Anthony. My pleasure. And uh, I think I hope that uh, this is uh, the first of uh, uh, conversation that may involve uh, next time a book, something that sure. you find. Uh, Interesting. Thank Great. you so much. Okay, thank you. Here.